Hello again everybody, welcome back to another edition of On The Range, and I'm in the A10C demonstrating CCRP bombing again, and this time I'm going to discuss the wind, which is one of the, if not the, biggest sources of bombing errors, in errors to where your bomb impacts on the ground, as opposed to where you want it to impact. Now the wind obviously is going to push any munition coming off the aircraft, not to mention the aircraft itself, in the direction that the wind is blowing. So I can tell by looking at my CDU right now that my uh, EGI, my uh, embedded GPS INS system, navigation system in the aircraft, is telling me that right now it's picking up winds at two, 260, uh, from 260 at 29 knots. So the winds are coming off of my right at 26 knots. So yeah, blowing in off the Black Sea. Now as I look out to the target area that I have set up, I know that if I run in on the target from this location, and I'm going to be bombing into a significant crosswind from left to right. And I know that that is going to have some effect on the bomb. So unless I do something to the aircraft to make it take that into account, it is going to miss the target. There's really not a whole lot I can do about that at this point. So next video I'm going to show you what you can do in the aircraft if you put effort into mission planning to help you be successful. But in this video, I'm just going to demonstrate the error that you get from the wind and show you a quick and dirty way that you can correct that error that yeah, it is quick and dirty but it is effective in some cer some certain circumstances if you don't have exact data on what the wind is doing okay so again winds coming in from left to right and I'm going to bring my pod back up and I'm set up on a conventional bomb bombing circle out here on the range I'm going to take it out of autopilot and also going to call up my Mark 82 profile, which is already set up for a, a CCRP delivery. Okay, I've got my targeting pod as sensor of, in, well, as my sensor point of interest, and let me make it sensor of interest also so that I can tweak my targeting just slightly. And now I want to fly this one as precisely as I can, just so that I know for this demonstration that any errors in where the bomb impacts is due to the wind and not my own. So the bomb should impact dead center in that circle. Okay, and I'm lined up pretty precisely or as precisely as I can possibly keep it. I have my solution cue counting down or my at least my time to release numeric counting down. I'm depressing and holding my weapons release switch. And here comes my solution cue. I just need to be as precise as I can on this. Okay, good release. All things being considered, if there were no wind whatsoever, that would hit dead center in this circle. So let's see what happens with a 29 knot crosswind from the left. And let me go wide field of view and zoom out. Better yet, let me go F6. We'll just follow the bomb in. Okay, so you can see the circle that I was bombing. It's the smaller one. And you can see that the bomb is tracking further and further to the right. That is the effect of the wind. So if I come back into my pod and zoom in a little bit, let me see if I can find that crater down there and show you what we need to do. Okay, so there's the crater. Significant miss to, what direction is that? The northeast. So, a quick and dirty method that I can use to correct that error is to simply offset my aim point that same distance in the opposite direction that I missed. So I missed to the northeast, so I need to offset to the southwest. And, I mean, this is not going to be precise, but it at least it's going to get you into the right ballpark when you're bombing from high altitude and you need to make a correction to be somewhat accurate and you don't have accurate wind data to feed into the aircraft. Okay, so now I'm offset from the target in the direction that I know the wind is blowing my bombs so I'm going to extend out a little bit more and then turn in and bomb it from the reciprocal heading and all things being equal this should be pretty close okay so now I'm coming around and setting up on a another run from the opposite direction and again I'm offset in the direction that I suspect the wind is going to push this bomb and again, I'm going to try to make this as precise as possible so that I know that all the errors are due to wind. 
and see how close we can get this. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be closer than the first one. Okay, so 15 seconds, and let me really concentrate on my steering here. Okay, to press and hold, weapons release switch. Okay, here comes the solution cue. Okay, weapon away. I think I was off a little bit to the right on my release, not a significant amount, but... Okay, this might hit a little bit right of where I was aiming, but at least it'll be, it'll still be in the general area that I'm looking for. So let me go to F6. Let's follow this bomb on in. You can see that it's started off uh, to the right of the target and the wind is pushing it back. So things are looking up for this release. A little long, I think. Okay, a little long, but significantly closer to the right ground track, and that long error might have just been due to my steering. Okay, now looking back into the target area, here's the original crater from a completely uh, by-the-book pass. Everything was lined up on the circle, but the wind pushed it over in that direction. So I simply offset so that I was correcting for the wind, and now here's the result of the second one. Now it's still not dead on perfect, because... I think I was set up a little bit to the right on my release, so I think there was some pilot error induced on that one. And it did hit a little bit long, which, again, I mean, you're going to have some error inherent into this due to you're not being, you're not going to be able to be exactly precise on getting it offset at the exact right place when you're aiming using this technique. So that's more of a demonstration of the effect of the wind and less a effective technique to correct for it, although it does correct somewhat for it if that's all you got. So next video I'm going to uh, come back in the same situation and show something you can do in the aircraft to correct that as long as you've put the proper mission planning into it first. You do need some data so the correction that you're going to make in the next video or see in the next video is only as good as the data that you put in. So Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.